guys, it's Mo from Mo in the Deep End, and Hollywood just cannot help itself. You know, sometimes I feel bad for them. They're like the the mice that keep coming into my house, even though we have five cats, but my children just put crumbs all over the floor, as you can see behind me, and the the puppy, even though I vacuum all the time you know the temptation is just too great and unfortunately they just continue to want to preach to us about things that we would rather not care about and honest to god if if they would just do it, young frankenstein is one of my favorite movies best movie ever i swear to goodness it had you know no political subversiveness it was just funny make funny stuff could we just be funny and original and cool but that seems to be verboten in hollywood so let's see what bride of frankenstein is going to be about in current year bride of frankenstein remake about quote unquote radical social change and directed by maggie gyllenhaal entering production uh looks like another must miss movie but again y'all i'm not a cinephile so it could be a great movie i'm sure it's alive it's alive now unalive it with fire before this gets out on film I guess Universal wants to burn money. It's gone full Joker. It's just going to take piles of money and just light it ablaze with this. Universal's Dark Universe fell apart, but one of its pet projects is going forward under the direction of Dark Knight's Maggie Gyllenhaal as her second feature. Well... According to Fangoria, a remake of Bride of Frankenstein moves into production next month with a star-studded cast. Written, produced, and directed by Gyllenhaal, the film will star Christian Bale, Penelope Cruz, Jesse Buckley, Gyllenhaal's husband, Peter Skarsgård, and reportedly Annette Bening. A summary on ProductionList.com offers insight into what part each is playing. A horror thriller about the Bride of Frankenstein with Cruz as the Bride Marna, Bale as Frankenstein, and Skarsgård playing a detective, it reads. Benning's role is a secret for now. Oh, come on. Benning's going to be Frankenstein. And the monster isn't named Frankenstein. Frankenstein is the doctor that made the monster. Come on, didn't everyone watch Wishbone at least? Come on, even if you just watched Wishbone, you would know these things. Reading is fundamental, children. An IMDb listing that only refers to the project as Untitled Maggie Gyllenhaal product, or Project adds that it will be set in 1930s Chicago. This listing also provides a summary that offers more clues as to the film's tone and themes. In 1930s Chicago, Frankenstein asks Dr. Euphorius to help create a companion. They give life to a murdered woman as the bride, sparking romance, police interest, and radical social change. Um, are you telling me that... Frankenstein is going to bring democracy back? Or socialism? What the actual hell? How, how about no social change? How about they just make a monster movie? How about Hulk smash? You know, sometimes we just want pretty colors. Sometimes my mind can just do pretty colors. I know most of the time my mind can't, which is why I can't do the Avatar movies, but then I can also watch Super Troopers and be just fine. So I never, look, I am brutally self-aware that my mind works in crazy ways, but this is dumb. Can we just have a good monster movie? <sighs> The premise sounds similar to Poor Things, in which a Frankenstein experiment revives Emma Stone's character with the brain of a fetus and turns her into an impulsive, smexy-crazed brat. 
That and the talk of radical social change raises red flags. Yes, can I get a red card out here? Ref, we need Hollywood out. Hollywood, you have abused your... You abused everything. Get out of here now. <laughs> You're out. Bring in a... Bring in Daily Wire, unfortunately. About the movie we are dealing with. Since the collapse of the Dark Universe concept, Hollywood's been trying to revive old Universal monster properties in novel ways. Last year's cracks at Dracula were hit and miss, but weren't positively woke. The Invisible Man was a smash and a riveting thriller, though it wore its feminism on its sleeve at times. How about no? Where are they going with all the loose reworkings of Frankenstein could bog down uh, the revival of the classic monster, monster's entire tropes the industry has been steadily alienating, alienating all fandoms with. Yeah, sounds like, again, I am so tired of being preached at. Like I said in my Barbie thing, I was actively hoping for commercial breaks. That's how bad this movie was and i kept looking at the time thinking oh my god this is almost three hours my i i could this is three hours of my life i'm never going to get back i mean watching a movie shouldn't be a homework assignment but that was totally what barbie was and i would much rather have a good movie again if you go in to your movie making your movie as a platform as a way to you know express your political beliefs then you should go in realizing that you are going to alienate at least half to one third of the country if you realize that then don't be upset when half or one third of the country thinks your show is garbage don't attack them you win in fully knowing that they weren't going to be you know kosher with a lot of choices that you made you're thumbing your nose at people and then wondering why they're not paying you you call them stupid flyover rubes and you want to preach at them instead of entertain them that doesn't work. And with money being tight, no family is going to make the choice to go spend, you know, 60 to $70 on a movie that might not be safe for their kids, might not espouse the values their kids want. You know, and I'm picking up kids, but I mean, people that have loved these, you know, particular movies, I mean, no one wants to spend goodless near like a hundred bucks to go see a stinker of a movie that feels like you are listening to a dissertation on militant feminism. I mean, if you do, God love you. Uh, Barbie is right up your alley. Let me tell you, uh, you're going to love it. But uh, the rest of us would rather not spend that type of money right now. So unless you would like to, you know, start shopping for a great values brand stuff hollywood you might want to change your game because you're you're leaving a lot of money on the table and it was kind of okay when you just looked at us with you know subtle silent derision but now you're you're not even couching it anymore you actively think that most of the country that doesn't agree with you is scum and it shows it shows and it's uh, not a good look and people have enough independent entertainment and youtubers and other things they don't need you back what you don't understand is is you need us we don't need you anymore and you should be terrified this is figuratively youtube not literally this is not but uh hollywood you're gonna wake up one day and realize you don't have very many you know cash paying fans anymore and hopefully it's in time that you can turn that that ship around otherwise this titanic is gonna go down and well hopefully someone some of you clowns you adult pretenders can 
can find some lifeboats here on YouTube, but I don't know. That's all I've got to say about this one. Thanks for listening to me ramble, y'all. I don't know what today is about. I will see you guys in a little bit. Have a wonderful day. It has been a rough couple of years, so say something nice to yourself. Say something nice to someone else. You never know if that might be the only kind thing that they have heard in a while. And let's be honest, uh, it's a very easy way for us introverts to interact and... Uh, pretend that we are okay peopling <laughs> or at least that's my trick to be honest have a great day guys bye